I am Matt Najad and I'm excited to have you here today. We're going to be covering the basic anatomy of the tooth and how it relates to the biomimetic approach. The premise of biomimetic dentistry is to replicate and copy your natural tooth as well as possible, which means not only how it looks, but how it behaves, the strength of it, the function, like how you chew on it and how it bends and flexes. And also one of the most important things about biomedic dentistry is even preserving the pulp vitality, which means keeping the tooth alive when it's possible. A lot of old dental techniques or traditional techniques involve taking away so much tooth that very commonly a root canal, which is taking the nerve of the tooth out, becomes very likely or required just to save the tooth. And that doesn't really make any sense. We don't want to do that. The tooth has numerous layers. So we're going to kind of drill in on the four main layers of the tooth. As you look here, we have enamel, we have the DEJ up top, then we have dentin and the pulp cavity. So we're gonna go through each of those one by one so you can understand the basic function of them and also why they're so important to how the tooth works overall. So enamel is the hardest substance in our body. Enamel makes the hard outer shell of the tooth. So when you look in this photograph over here, your enamel kind of is all around the tooth. It actually stops right around here, right where the tooth and um, where the root of the tooth basically starts. And so it's the hardest substance in the body. It's very strong. It can withstand a lot of forces, but it's also very brittle. And what that means is it's likely to fracture if it was the only thing that the tooth was made of. So if you had a tooth that was all enamel, it would probably fracture and break way too commonly because it's such a brittle or hard material. Dentin is the layer that is under the enamel and while it's still really hard, it's about as hard as bone, it's relatively way more flexible than enamel is. And that's really important because I just told you if you had a tooth that was all enamel, then it would be too hard, it would fracture, it would break, you, we'd be having all sorts of problems. But the combination of enamel and dentin together with a good union, which means like a good connection between the two of them, that combination works very well in the mouth. Our teeth, believe it or not, are extremely, extremely successful. And even though we get cavities and problems, it's hard to replicate in dentistry the function of a normal, natural, intact tooth. But the combination of that enamel and the dentin, which is more flexible, makes for a system of a tooth that is just a real good combination between strength, flexibility, the um, resistance to chipping and fracture and all those types of things. Between your enamel and dentin, okay? Because these are two different materials. You can really think of your enamel and then your dentin, but they're not like one solid piece. You have one layer and then the next layer. So they're joined together by what's called the DEJ, which means dentin enamel junction. And pretty much this is like a bond or a glue that holds the enamel and dentin together. And if this bond or glue were not as strong as it were, then it wouldn't be such a good system. But in reality, it's such a good, strong bond that together the enamel and dentin benefit from their presence. The dentin is, like I said, it's more flexible, but it's also softer, which means if your tooth was made of all dentin, as you eat and chew and grind, it would wear away very fast and you wouldn't have much tooth left. And we see that all the time in dentistry. But the enamel is hard and brittle and it fractures together you get the best of both worlds and it's because of this DEJ which joins the enamel and dentin together like a bond or a glue that these things are so successful. So if you're thinking like I'm thinking, we want to in biomedic dentistry restore teeth in a way that replicates the strength of enamel, the flexibility of dentin and that really strong glue or bond that holds everything together. The last layer of the tooth I want to talk about is the pulp cavity. The pulp cavity is the deepest layer inside. So you have your enamel, your DEJ, your dentin, and then as you work your way down to this red area, you get to the pulp cavity. And the pulp cavity is the vitality of the tooth. It's what gives the sensory nerves and the blood flow and all that stuff to the tooth, which makes the tooth 
alive essentially and what happens is when you get a big cavity or you shave a lot of tooth away sometimes the tooth becomes so badly inflamed or damaged that it doesn't have a chance to recover or heal so then what happens is you need a root canal so part of biomimetic dentistry is the goal of avoiding a root canal and we'll go through what a root canal is and how we avoid that in another section but for now you want to know that preserving the vitality of the tooth is important the pulp of the tooth is what gives the tooth its vitality and the more conservative we can be and the less we can shave and the better we can do our restorations the less likely you'll ever need one of these types of root canal procedures now here, I'm gonna show you the two different ways this can happen. So in biomedic dentistry, we'd be looking at this tooth over here and thinking, okay, we're missing a lot going on. There's some areas that need some cleaning. This is tartar or calculus. We can clean that up. We don't need to shave it away. And in biomimetic dentistry, our goal is to really focus on restoring just that area. We can make the tooth as strong as we need. In fact, even stronger than traditional dentistry by conserving more. So the concept is you don't need to take more tooth structure away in order to make the tooth stronger. That doesn't make any sense. So biomedic dentistry would focus on restoring the damaged, decayed, infected portions of the tooth, but not taking away any of the healthy parts. In the traditional approach, you would look at this, and this is how traditional dentistry has been for a long time. You'd go, okay, I'm missing a lot of tooth. These walls are thin. The only way I can make this strong is shaving even more off and covering it with a crown. And that's been done for many, many years and it's been successful, but it's not the best approach and it really is no longer necessary. Years ago, that was the only option. Our understanding of how biomedic dentistry works has improved. We don't have to do that anymore. And it's such a, such a good concept and such a great way to keep your teeth for life that it's important that we steer away from this type of thing over here. I wanna finish this section by quickly showing you an example of a biomimetic restoration. Here we have a patient missing a large portion of the back of the tooth, okay? And if you were to go ahead and shave that for a crown like I showed you before, there would be no tooth left. You'd basically be shaving the little remaining tooth. You'd basically just have a stub of a tooth. You'd put a crown on it. The crown would oftentimes come off because it wasn't bonded. So there'd be all sorts of problems. A lot of patients, who have crowns can attest to the fact that they come off a lot. It's very common with traditional approaches and when the tooth is short. Instead of doing all that, we're able to just restore that portion with a piece of ceramic that mimics the natural tooth structure. It's bonded just like the DEJ bonds the enamel to your dentin. So in other words, it's glued together in a very strong way. And a tooth like this can last 20, 30 or more years if it's taken care of like a normal tooth. So this is an example of a biomedic restoration and all the advantages you can get from that. Okay guys, so that concludes our section on the basic tooth anatomy and the biomedic approach. This is very important. I'm glad you were able to tune in and see all that. If you like what you saw here, please tune back. We're gonna have a lot of other amazing videos, including how a root canal can be prevented and other very important parts of the biomedic approach. We'll see you soon. Thank you.